As you speak, you are releasing the power of that word, the power that God has designed. You've come into agreement with His power. You've spoken it. Now the power of God can produce that thing and cause it to happen in your life. Hello again, my dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bagg on Wisdom for Life. We have had a great week looking at the law of confession. It's so important we understand these things. We know that Solomon said when he was talking about wisdom, in all you're getting, get understanding. See, when we understand something, we can use it more effectively. Paul reminded us in Romans 3 verse 27, there is a law of faith. The same way this natural world is governed by natural laws, we got the laws of physics and many, many other laws. We know that this world works because we can count on those laws being effective and consistent. Well, those physical laws are governed by spiritual law. Remember, we saw in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, that God being in the express brightness of His glory, the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power. Right in the beginning, when God said, light be, it was the power of those words, as He said, light be, that the power that was in the Holy Spirit was released at that moment, and all of the nature of the world that we see around us was manifested through that power. How was the power released? By words. That's what's called the word of His power. Not the power of His words, the word of of His power. So power is available, but it's released through words. And so once again, Proverbs 18 verse 21 told us that death and life are in the power of the tongue, in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit of it. So when I recognize that there is a law of confession, and then I come into agreement with it, and I start to cooperate with it, then what will happen? I'll see this fruit coming to life. Now, what fruit are we talking about? All the blessings of God. Everything that God has given you is a promise. All these things. You may read a verse and say, Wow, God said I can have this. But I may not see it in my life yet. But I can activate it because I have a law of confession. And so when I understand that, I put it into action, it's going to work in my life. And that's why we saw even our salvation Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God's raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, it's with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and it's with the mouth that confession is made to salvation. So even though the full price for salvation is already in place and has been for 2,000 years, in fact, even before the foundation of the world, the Bible says that Jesus was crucified. So in God's mind, sin was already dealt with, but it had to be carried out in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Once that was settled, it's now available to all men. How's that activated in our lives? Through confession. Same way, everything else that God has promised is activated through this law of confession. So let's go have a look at Matthew chapter 13. This is so important to see because if we don't get this principle, we're going to struggle and wonder why things are not working out in our lives. And we see other Christians that seem to be succeeding. And how come I never see it in my life? Well, here's the key. Matthew 13 verse 10. The disciples came and said to Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. For whoever has to him, more will be given, and he'll have abundantly. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. The key that I want you to see here is that when you give your life to Jesus, it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. The mysteries. See, someone that doesn't understand these laws, and doesn't get them, to them it's going to be a mystery. They don't understand. They, you know, maybe somebody says, you know, every flu season, every, every winter, man, I get sick every single winter. Let the temperature just change slightly, and before you know it, I'm sick. 
I don't understand it. I take medicines. I take flu shots. I take vitamins. I just don't understand why I always get sick. Well, you see, that they don't know that there is a law that says you have what you say. And they keep saying they're going to get sick every time winter comes. And so now winter's on its way, and they're probably already telling their friends, watch, watch now. Watch if it doesn't happen. The first cold day, I'm going to get sick. And then the cold day comes, and they get sick, and they say, you see, I told you. Well, hang on now. Without realizing it, they are actually operating this law without even knowing it's there. But family of God, you and I, are given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. We realize the reason you're getting sick is because you keep saying it. Now stop saying that. Remember the, the law, when we're looking at the law, the, the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. It does not say. There are certain things we should not be saying. And so we've been designed to contradict and to counteract even when something is happening. I don't have to say it just because it's happening. I look at where I want to be and what I want to happen in my life, and that's what I'm going to say. Even God, when he was talking to Job, we see in chapter 38, verse 33 from the Living Bible, Do you know the laws of the universe and how the heavens influence the earth? So heaven is governing this earth. And God has put laws in place. Now, here's the thing. We can know these mysteries. So if we don't know them, it lands up hurting our lives. But if we do know them, we can put them into action. Now, we've read this already. I'm going to read it again, but I want to show you something from it that's going to help you get an insight and understanding to how this works. Romans chapter 10. And we're going to go have a look here once again. Verse 8. Remember, the, 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 the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. What does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Now, we see that the word of faith is not just faith on its own. It's, it has words attached to it. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That word confession, the word confess. Now, here's what you're going to get a hold of. Confession. It's not just simply saying something because it's what I, I need to say. The word confess comes from a Greek word. Now, I'm not Greek, so I'm not sure of my pronunciation. Yeah, I've tried it different ways, but this is the best way. Homologio. Uh, now that, if you want to write it down, it comes from Strong's number 3670, from the Strong's Concordance, 3670, H-O-M-O-L-O-G-E-O, H-O-M-O-L-O-G-E-O. -O. Now you notice it's got two words in there, homo, logio. The word logio comes from the word logos, which means word. That's an uttered word, a spoken word. It's something that embodies a conception or an idea. Now, homo means the same. So it's something that's the same. So homo logio means I'm going to take the word, God spoke it, he's conceptualized something, and I'm going to come into homo, the same, agree. So as I come into the same agreement, with what he said. I bring my word, my logio, in agreement with his logio, and when the two are identical, that's homo logio. That's confession. So it's not just saying, oh, you know, I just say it, just say it, just say it. No, what I want to do is go, Father, I agree with this. I believe this. See, when I saw and I heard that Jesus is raised from the dead, I may have been told that many, 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 many times. People say, God loves you. Jesus loves you. You need to give your life to Jesus. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. What happened? I'm not in homo logio. I'm not in agreement. But the moment I saw it and it became manifest in my life, yes, God does love me. I do believe he died for me, and I do believe he rose from the dead. Now, I'm coming into agreement, I'm homo, but now I need to logio. <laughs> Getting this? So it's coming into agreement with a word. And what do I do? 
I confess. That's what confession is. As I speak in agreement, in other words, God has a flow. Think of it this way. His power is flowing in a certain way. If I'm standing on the side, that power is flowing in this way. I'm not going to be moved. Imagine a river flowing down through a valley. That water's moving and it has power in it. But if something's lying on the side, it's not affecting it. If I had a, a, something that can float or whatever, and I throw it in the water, what happens? That power carries it. So when I come into agreement and I say what God says, I step into the flow of that power and by the word that I've spoken. And as I speak the same word that He said, that power carries me and it will take me to where that word's designed to cause to happen. See, that creation that that word intended to create, I'm now in agreement with it, and that power will manifest in my life as well. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, again I say to you. So this is something he taught regularly. He said it all the time. Now he's reaffirming it. He says, again I say to you, if two of you agree, See, there we go once again. That's that homo logio. If you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So how do I know I agree? The spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So if I believe something, that's what I'm going to speak. So now, to counteract that thing that where I used to say, uh, you know, if something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong with me. Uh, I used to say things like, if I undo something, it's always the last bolt that's going to be stuck. I used to have that happen to me all the time till I found out I have what I say. And so I had to go to the Word of God and renew my mind. So I begin, uh, maybe if it's healing, I take healing scriptures and I repeat them, reading it from the Word. I speak the Word. Jesus bore away every sickness. He took every disease. By His stripes I've been healed. God sent that Word to heal. His words are spirit and they are life. they life to those who find them and health to their flesh. God's Word is life in me. What am I doing? I'm putting the Word inside of me till I go, I'm in agreement with that. And now I speak it out from a heart of faith. I say, Father, thank you. My body is healed, hell, healthy and whole. That's it. It's, I'm healthy and whole. And now that I'm healthy and whole, I thank you that that healing manifests in Jesus' name. That healing manifests in Jesus' name. That healing manifests. Wherever it is, whatever it is, just put your hand. That healing manifests. Everything now is working in my body. What happens? It's now mine. It's tangible. It showed up. It becomes a reality in my life. If you've sown your seed, you're going to give. Now, you may not see a result immediately, but you're giving. And now you say, God, thank you. I'm in agreement. You said that you supply my every need. I receive that in the name of Jesus. What am I doing? Homologio. I'm speaking in agreement. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, look what it says in verse 33. Matthew chapter 12, he says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. How do we know what an apple tree is? Well, you could say that is an apple tree, but why is it called an apple tree? Because apples are coming out of it. So whatever comes out of a tree, you know what that tree is. That's what he's saying. And he says here, verse 34, you brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? Now listen to this. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. How often has that happened? Sometimes we say something, and as we say it, we go, Ooh, I didn't mean to say that. I've had to renew my mind. Maybe you didn't mean to say it, but it got down there. It couldn't come out if it wasn't there already. How did it get there? Because it's something I heard too often. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure, the good deposit, the abundance of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. 
I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, by your words will be condemned. I want you to notice the premium that God, Jesus puts on words. Our very words that we speak, we will be judged on them. And so on that basis, I want to make sure that I bring forth good things, because that's where it comes from. The good thing comes from your heart. But how's it going to come from your heart? What, how are you going to say it? It's because you put it down there in abundance. This is why I encourage people to keep listening to the messages. We make them available so that you can listen to it over and over and over. And as you listen to it again and again and again, what's happening is you're depositing it. You're putting it down inside your heart. You are saying, I believe this word. And by putting it down in your heart in abundance, it eventually builds up. It's like a sponge that's got over wet. Now it comes out of you. As you speak, you're releasing the power of that word, the power that God has designed. You've come into agreement with His power. You've spoken it. Now the power of God can produce that thing and cause it to happen in your life. I trust you've had a great time. You've got this law. Understand the law of confession. All right, we have come a long way this week just establishing the importance to understand this law, to be able to make sure that we recognize it and love it so that we can see it work in our lives. Now, now that we understand the law of confession, this is Friday, it's our giving day here at Allen Bag Ministries, and you've got an opportunity to sow your seed into the Word of God. And I wanted you to see something here that is so important because I want you to get maximum harvest out of your seed. Now we see here in Galatians chapter 6, first of all, verse 7 says, do not be deceived. So that means right here, if Paul felt it necessary to say, do not be deceived, it's possible to be deceived. What is the area that the enemy is trying to deceive me in? He says, God is not mocked whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now, why is he trying to deceive me in the area that if I sow seed, then I will reap a harvest? Because that any farmer will know that to be a truth. That's not the deception. Well, if you go back one verse, you'll see what he just said in verse 6. He says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. What that principle is, you go look at it from another translation. It says that he who is taught the word should pay his teacher. So what God has established is that when you hear the word of God being taught, that you would give into that ministry so that it can continue to do the work that you've received from. That's called partnership. So when you give into this work today, you're not just giving a donation. You are literally partnering with us that wherever this word is preached, lives will be transformed and changed. And it's because you've been taught the Word of God. There's a principle. As you sow back into it, don't be deceived now. This is what the enemy is trying to do, is steal that privilege from you. You have a privilege and an honor to be able to give into a ministry that's taught you the Word of God. And when you do that, you trigger this, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he will reap. So now, You've activated, by sowing your seed today, you've activated a harvest back into your life. Now, for that harvest to manifest, let's keep reading. Verse 8, He who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now listen to this. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Now, let's tie that together with what we've learned this week. In other words, I sow my seed. I'm in agreement today. I've heard that if I give into this ministry, I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to multiply. I'm going to increase. Now, what must I do? I must activate that with my speaking. So, as you give, you sow your seed into the ministry. Now, Continue to water that seed and keep sowing to your spirit. Keep speaking the life of God's word. Father, I gave and I thank you because I've given. 
I multiply. Because I've sown seed, it increases. And I thank you. I'm not going to grow weary while doing good. And part of doing good is believing this law of confession. And as I speak it, I thank you. The windows of heaven are open above me. I'm blessed. You, you make grace abound towards me. I always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. And when the devil tries to show you that you're lacking somewhere, no, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What's happening? You're keeping that seed at work. You are upholding the word of his power. And by you keeping the word right, the power of God can go to work in that seed and it'll bring the harvest that's designed to produce in your life. So thank you once again for looking after and upholding your part of being a partner. We pray for you every day. And as you sow your seed, the details are there on the screen. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you so much for my dear friend as they give into this ministry today. According to your word, I'm coming to agreement with them. Agreeing. When we agree together, Father, it is done that you multiply and increase them and produce a great harvest for them. In the name of Jesus, amen. It is done. Hallelujah. Many people know about faith. They believe and trust God for various things in their lives, but somehow they still don't see their desired results. One of the greatest hindrances that I have seen to faith is the confession within faith. In order to see faith work, we need to understand the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith, the attitude of faith, is when I believe, I speak. In this series, Alan Bagg brings a fresh revelation on the importance of the spirit of faith. He will help you to take your spiritual life to an all new level. God has placed within us the power and ability to speak what we believe. He will help you to see the promises of God manifest in your life. When you speak by faith, you're going to see that faith manifesting the promise that God has given. Get this series today and understand the spirit of faith. Contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries by making use of any of these contact details. What a powerful week, amen. Now, now we're going to carry on with it. There, there's a lot more that I want to share. In the meantime, make sure you get this series. This is understanding the spirit of faith. So today we're talking about the law of confession and built into that law of faith is the law of confession and it's upheld by the spirit of faith. And so it's important that you got all the different aspects. And this is going to be four parts that you're going to listen to again and again and again. Uh, there it is on MP3. You can just take that thumb drive and plug it in your computer. You can get it straight onto your phone. And that way you can listen to it wherever you're waiting somewhere. Just, just get that word in you and listen to it over and over and over. And as you do, uh, you're going to find faith growing more and more. And when you get the spirit of faith, put it together with the law of confession, it's unstoppable. So make sure you get yours today. Well, that's all we got time for today. We're going to get together in our various places of worship. If you're not yet in a good word-based spiritual church, find one. There's this one nearby you somewhere and get a hold of that pastor. Say, listen, I'm here with you. We're going to make work together. I want to see the kingdom of God grow and increase. I'm here available. Use me any way that you can. Uh, if you are in Cape Town and you're looking for a place of worship, we've got a lot of campuses in different places now and you can find one near to you. If I happen to be in the building the day that you're there as well, please come up to me, shake my hand. Love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at alanbaggministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. 
at allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. As a partner of Allenbag Ministries, you will have early access to special meetings and seminars with Allen Bag, as well as discounted prices on study material taught here at Allen Bag Ministries. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. You can also catch up on any Wisdom for Life programming, or if you prefer, watch our latest Wisdom for Life programs with Alan Bag on our website. All services at the Bay Christian Family Church are also streamed on our Alan Bag Ministries website, so you too can be part of our E family that also participate on the weekends and on special occasions. At allenbagministries.org, you can get hold of some great study material and resources, as well as some faith building products that are occasionally on promotion. Whether you're interested in information about starting your journey as a believer or growing in your understanding and faith, if you're looking to participate in our services and television programs or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources, whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry. Alan Bag Ministries airs all of our programs on our YouTube channel. If you missed any of our programs, you can either contact our offices and get hold of them or subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you never miss a single program. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag. Today we're going to carry on with... You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience. Hello, my friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag, and this week we have an exciting time ahead of us. You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience, where and when you want, on our Alan Bag Ministries YouTube channel. Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Watch Wisdom for Life on our YouTube channel and subscribe to never miss out on any of our programs. For any info, please contact us here at allenbackministries.org.